The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. Here's a question I received from a woman who wants to speak to her sister, a sister that's making, who is making one bad choice after another, but she wants to speak to her sister in a way that won't hurt her sister's feelings. So see what your gut response is to this letter and what you might do in a similar situation. Hello, Dr. Ellen Kenner. How do I tell my sister Judy, who is 30 years old and has two kids out of wedlock, that she's making bad choices? She and the father of the kids, Mike, are not married. She is now cheating on Mike by dating Tom. How should I talk to her about her choices in a way that she won't feel offended or hurt? Thank you very much, and I appreciate your help, Marion. Marion, my gut response was, you cannot hurt your sister any more than she's hurting herself. And if you focus on, oh my God, I don't want to offend my sister, when she is so blatantly irrational, that's not going to help you in life. You want to train yourself to speak your mind to focus on facts, to know your limitations. You're not in charge of your sister's life, and you're not there to nag her or belittle her or punish her. Um, you, But you also don't want to, by your silence, condone her irrational behavior. You know, when she sees you and says, oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. And you know she's not doing fine. And you know that her two kids are struggling. And you know that there's a lot of fighting in the house. You need to speak up. So how do you do that? Um, Well, first you need to know that your sister Judy, she's 30 years old, she's a grown adult, that she herself, on some level, knows that she is making bad choices. Now, what is a person who is making bad choices over and over again, you know, choosing to have kids when she's not married, then choosing to, and she's not doing it because, you know, she... I'm assuming because she just doesn't like the organization, the uh, where some people are essentially married, but they don't like to go through the wedding. They don't like to have the the legal aspect there. But I'm assuming that she just went and had kids, and then uh, she had one, and then she had another, and now she's cheating and kind of making a mess of her life. So she knows on some level that she is making bad choices, but. My guess is that she does not want your clarity. You want to sit there, sit and spell out exactly what she's doing wrong. You want to show her that, hey, the choices you're making now are really going to bite you in the butt in the future. You know, you, when when um, Tom, when Mike finds out that you're cheating on him with Tom, you know, there's going to be a lot of chaos in the house and it's not going to be good for you or the kids or anybody and you shouldn't keep doing this. Your sister knows this. You know, she's not dumb. But she doesn't want you to name it. That's how people who evade, push stuff out of awareness and just want to go on the range of the moment typically act. They just want to have the cake and eat it too. They want to be able to have the affair, have the love affair, you know, get the hugs and not look at the long range consequences. One of the wonderful skills that you want for yourself in life is with whatever big choice you make, I'm not talking about buying an ice cream cone, but I'm talking about a lifetime choice like having kids or getting married or going into a career. You want to think longer range, not just how will this solve my current problem, but how will it look two years from now, five years from now, ten years from now. So what? here are some things that you can do. If your sister's inviting this increasing chaos in her life, you first need to focus on, number one, enjoying your life and valuing the fact that you obviously are making better choices than your sister. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to name that, that get so upset that she's making bad choices. Number two, you can talk with your sister. You can say to her something on the order of, Judy, I remember when I used to look up to you because you were so thoughtful about and then fill in the blank. I want you back. I want my sister back. And when I see you making choices without much thought, I wonder what I could say that would help you uh, value yourself more. I don't think it's too late for you to change and make better choices, and I also know it's in your hands. You can't force your sister's mind. It's not your responsibility, but you can pass that message along to her. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner on The Rational Basis of Happiness. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance by Dr. Ellen Kenner. Here's an example of how gender differences can cause conflict. 
Andres was a good provider and loved surprising Kara with special gifts, but she felt lonely and invisible on the deepest level. He was unaware of her most profound values and feelings. He was of no comfort when she had a fight with her mother or had a bad day with her cranky boss. She wanted Andres to listen and commiserate with her. She would relate bad experiences, not with the intent of getting his advice, but to feel understood. But Andres would launch into telling her precisely what to say and do. He wanted to fix everything. How would they address this common pattern in relationships? Kara would need to be clear about what she needs, and Andres could learn how to be a sympathetic listener. You can download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com, and you can buy the book at amazon.com.